welcome to part two of my MRA Blu-ray collection. This is going to be all horror. Uh, so this is most of my MRA Blu-rays. If there are some that I've put in storage that I'm not going to, going to dig out. Um, I noticed a few missing from when I was gathering them all up. So this isn't the complete ones, but this is what I have, which is not in storage ultimately. This is what I have on my shelves. So we're going to start off with The Ward, which is a... Part of my favourite subgenre is Haunted Hospitals, although I actually didn't really like this movie. Um, I actually got quite friendly with the directors because I reviewed one of their other films, but uh, this movie, not so keen on. Um, this one I have a bit of a story with. So this is known as X SX Tape or Sex Tape, and uh, it's essentially about a couple that sneak into an abandoned hospital to film a sex movie. Now, I reviewed this, and um, I put it up on the channel, but this review cost me six months uh, strike, and I was demonetized for six months because YouTube thought I actually uploaded a sex tape. Even though I tried to appeal it, <laughs> this movie cost me six months of monetization, but there you go. But it is actually quite a fun movie. Um, there you go. This is the French version. Uh, Greystone, another um, haunted hospital movie. This one not quite as good, to be quite honest with you. German one. Uh, the Crying Dead. Um, this one I actually quite like. This is an American one, but it's actually a burn on demand. Now, I know there's a lot of people that say, oh, burn on demand means it's... Um, uh, uh, bootleg, not strictly the case because I got this directly from the uh, company's website. There are instances where you'll get bed on demand discs for small independent films. I'll show you another one a little bit later where that is not, simply not the case. But this is, um, yeah, the crying dead. Episode 50, uh, again, another haunted asylum movie. I do love them. Uh, I think this one was directed by Michael Rooker, if I'm not mistaken. The film that got me into haunted asylum movies, of course, Grave Encounters. Uh, one of the best found footage movies I think there is. And then, of course, Grave Encounters 2. That is the UK Blu-ray. Uh, this is what I picked up quite recently. I haven't actually watched it yet. I only got it like a month or so ago. Uh, Psych 9. I think this is like a Dutch Blu-ray or something. Uh, this one is a German one. Paranormal Investigations for Sanitarium. So in Germany, they'll kind of like release a lot of other movies. Uh, cheap, you know, um, indie movies under the Paranormal Investigations banner. This one's Sanatorium. I actually thought it was another film uh, that was uh, released on the After Dark label and I wanted to get it on Blu-ray. But it isn't. It's something completely different. And um, I haven't watched it because it actually appears to be a German film. So uh, there you go. Now, this one, not actually a, a uh, uh, Amore case, to be honest with you, but uh, I just kind of keep it. It's the what my one and only Criterion Collection movie. Um... Obviously, Night of the Living Dead. It's like a, so it's like a digipack, really, more than anything. Uh, moving on to some zombie films. Here's one I reviewed uh, relatively recently. Well, I say that probably about a year ago now. 13 Eerie. And now I really like, I really enjoyed this movie. And um, it's got Catherine Isabel in it, so who, who's come kind of like a, a screen queen. And, um, yeah, it's quite a fun, gooey zombie film. Another uh, another kind of movie that was surprisingly good, Dead Mine. And this is an Asian finance film, uh, something like Indonesia or somewhere like that. And um, yeah, it's about all these kind of explorers that end up going into this kind of mine. And there's all these kind of like terracotta style warriors that kind of come to life. It's pretty good. Uh, Wormwoods, this is the Australian... Uh, Kind of Mad Max cross zombies, really. Um, Wormwood Road of the Undead. This is the German version. Uh, 
Uh, Dead Heat was one of my favourite VHS movies. Uh, this, is, this combines the kind of the buddy cop movie with the zombies, and this is uh, one of the '88 films uh, releases with the kind of the uh, limited slip cover. Uh, Zombie. This. This is actually an Italian version with a kind of a, a slip case. Um, Uh, FPS stands for First Person Shooter. This is a German movie and it plays almost like you are watching a first person shooter game, very much like Doom. This came out before Hardcore Henry, quite a few years before. Um, and it's even more so like a game. It has like an 8-bit intro and all sorts. Um, it's it's interesting. It gets a little repetitive, I won't lie. But, you know, it's, it's uh, fairly fun. Uh, Return the Living Dead Part Three. This is the uh, obviously the uh, Vestron Video uh, Collector's Edition, and I love. I had a real crush on Mindy Clark, who plays Julie here. Um, but it's back when this sort of first came out, and this is a obviously part of the loosely connected series, um, and certainly more serious movie than the kind of the the previous two, and I think probably the second best in the series outside of the first one. Uh, the Crazies, this is the remake. I really enjoy this movie. I, people always say, oh, I don't like horror remakes, but I think there's, there's more good horror remakes than there are bad ones, if you want my opinion, for a controversial one there. Uh, I actually think horror did, does lend itself to um, having remakes, and I think there's you know plenty of good ones out there. Relatively recent zombie film, it stains the sand red. This is a German version. And this is an interesting premise about a uh, a woman who gets stranded in the desert and is followed by one solitary zombie. So, and uh, she's obviously getting exhausted from dehydration and stuff. Whilst this zombie obviously doesn't stop. It's pretty good. It's quite an interesting and unique take on it. And she almost treats it like a dog in the end. It's quite funny. Uh, American World for London. Pretty much no frills. Uh, just the standard UK release. Uh, one of my favourite zombie films, probably one of my two favourite zombie films, this and Dog Soldiers, and this is Bad Moon. And uh, for my money, this has got the best werewolf in it in regards to practical effects and what it looks like of any film. It's my number one werewolf. Um, now, I know American Werewolf in London is regarded as the best werewolf film, but that's a continually higher budget movie. Uh, to me, this is the gold standard when you're talking about kind of like lower budget affair. Stars Michael Paré and is based on a book called Thor. Uh, Werewolf Beast Among Us. This is a, a Dutch release, I believe. And it's kind of like a Van Helsing kind of style uh, werewolf movie. Not too bad. Moving on to some vampire movies. Prowl. This one reminded me a lot of the... Um, uh, what was it? The... Uh, Oh, God, what's the one where they're in Alaska? I can't think of what it's called now. Um, that one. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it reminds me of that. It's kind of like a vicious, brutal uh, vampires, and they're kind of like very animalistic, but it's, it's a little bit low budget. Uh, Dracula 3000. I had this on VHS, so I picked it up on Blu-ray as well. I actually quite enjoyed it. It's a fun, silly sci-fi um Vampire movie hybrid. Uh, Midnight Sun. Uh, probably not a lot of people know about this one, but I think I think it's a really underrated vampire movie, and it's kind of one of these ones which has a kind of a realistic uh, look at what it would be like to become a vampire, if you know what I mean. And um, and, and it's very it's treated very seriously, and uh, yeah, it's a really good movie. Very dramatic. It's a very dramatic movie. Uh, Vampire Journals, this is actually a spin-off from the Subspecies series. This is an American Blu-ray. And I really, really like this. This is very similar to the um, Interview with a Vampire style kind of romantic vampire 
uh, type thing. So it has some tangential links to the sub subspecies um, movies, but it is more or less different characters for the most part. Uh, but I really like it, and I'm kind of I was a little bit sad to see that they didn't kind of spin this off into its own series because um, our kind of our main character uh, Ash is kind of like this vampire who hates being a vampire and wants kind of the vampires and things. I thought it was quite good. Uh, Afflicted. Um, this is a great found footage movie about vampires. Bit of a crappy cover, I'm not going to lie. Um, doesn't really do much to sell it there. But it's a real fun and, um, high, you know, well-paced vampire found footage movie. One of my, well, probably my favourite Dracula movies, this one, uh, the Frank Langella one, um, which is an American kind of take on the kind of the vampire mythos. And this has got a great soundtrack by John Williams and... Uh, Frank Langella is, I think, great in the role, to be honest with you. And, um, you know, makes for a somewhat sympathetic uh, Dracula. Uh, this is a low-budget movie that was a bit of a blind buy uh, from SRS Video, which is kind of a small indie label in the States. And um, it was kind of like an unreleased uh, vampire movie from, like, the early 90s I think it was and it's it is as cheesy as you probably think it is real kind of low low budget stuff Fright Night 2 uh, once again we're talking about grey release this is the Spanish version however this is the only way you can get it on Blu-ray at the moment you can get a German media book but uh, MRA wise currently this is it And uh, then we have the UK version of Fright Night. This is the Eureka one, which comes with the um, you also called Charlie Brewster uh, documentary, which you can buy separately. Uh, I was tempted to get that, but I thought I've already got it, so I'm not going to buy it again. Uh, prior to that, I had the um, f the German version, which I think was the um, the first European version to come out. Uh, which is pretty much a no-frills release, to be honest. And then we had the Twilight Time uh, version. This is, there's two versions of this. This is the first version, and then they had a, a later version as well. This one comes with a, like a magnet. And was one of the... Was before the other Fright Nights came out, this was like mega expensive. Being Human Season 1, this is a British um, supernatural drama action comedy series about a werewolf, a vampire and a ghost that have a house share. It was remade uh, in a, to a Canadian series and this is the British original, that's Season 1. And then we had Season 2. I actually prefer the American version, I will say though. Uh, Dark World, this is a blind buy, I still haven't got around to watching this, obviously a kind of like a, somewhat of a um, rip-off of the Underworld series, but I haven't watched it, I just thought, yeah, I'm a sucker for marketing, that cover sold me. Uh, then we have The Fright Night 2, this is the newer version of The Fright Night 2, which is actually a remake of the first film again, bizarrely. The weakest out of The Fright Night movies, I would say. And then we have the Fright Night remake with Colin Farrell. Um, now, Fright Night is my favourite film, so a lot of people are against remakes. This is not as good as the original, but I still enjoy it in its own right. It's a different film, to be honest with you. Um, and I quite like the way that this did do some of the... Um, some, some things like you haven't seen before, about how the vampire gets gets around the kind of not being, not being invited in, things like that. Okay, moving on to some more kind of slashery stuff. This one is uh, Jennifer's body. Uh, this one has an interesting slipcase, which I don't know how well this will show up, but it's like really embossed. And you can see, uh, you know, it's, um, you know, obviously quite shapely with old Megan Fox's uh, bod there. Um, this one, the doll. 
Uh, this is a, another female slasher, actually. And again, this is one that which was a burn on demand disc. Um, but I got this directly from the, uh, as I say, from the uh, filmmaker's website. So there you go. And another female uh, slash. This one I really like. It's because it's kind of like a ninja cross a mannequin, and it's it's pretty good. So I'm not a big slasher fan to be honest with you, but I found uh, this one to be quite interesting because it, this the, the the villain acts so differently. She's so nimble and so like not a big hulk, you know, hunk hulking guy and all that and. Uh, you know, she's basically like ninja, ninja-like, so it's a very different kind of threat in a way. Uh, Screen Park was actually a blind buy that, again, I have now got round to watching. Sometimes I'll just go on, on, on Amazon and thought, well, that looks good, read, read the little thing, and I'll oh, give that a try. So I quite like Scarecrow, and he kind of looks like a Scarecrow. Speaking of scarecrows, this is the um, the movie Scarecrows uh, with Ted Vernon. This is an Australian uh, version, which comes with this kind of slipcase. And this is the first version that I got of it. Uh, I also picked up the 88 Films uh, Stasher Collection. Um, and I also got a media book of this. This is actually one of my favourite horror films. Uh, really spooky, if you ask me. I think this... this this movie emanates spookiness. Curse of Chucky. Uh, this one I actually got in a, what do they call them? Um, horror packs, is it? Uh, horror pack actually asked me to do an unboxing and they sent me this version of it. Um, uh, the Bad Man. This one is a signed um, edition from the director. It stars Ellie Church. Uh, shark movies. Got a few shark movies to show you now. 47 metres down. Outside the Jaws. This is, in my opinion, the best shark movie out there. And I reviewed this when it was first released under a different name called In the Deep. And it was released and then kind of pulled off sale about five days later. But because I was waiting for it, I got, it, I got to see it on the day of release. And um, I reviewed it. And it's since become my one of my most watched reviews. And they actually used um, a quote for the trailer when they re-released it as this. Um, it, 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 if you watch one of the trailers, it says, uh, the best shark movie since Jaws. That was me for my review. And, uh, yeah, they used it in one of the actual TV spots, which is quite fun. This is the American version. Great film. Uh, the Reef, Australian uh, shark movie. Australian release. Uh, open Water, also known as Cage Dive. This one is also known as Open Water 3, but it was never made as that. This is a really... I actually quite like this movie. It's a found footage film. Um, but has the shocks in, in, in it a lot, but I do feel, it ha you know, when they are in it, I think it's pretty effective, although there's a little bit of forced drama in it. Uh, Shark Night 3D, you know, relatively big budget movie with CGI sharks. Um, Ghost Shark, I'm not a huge fan of these kind of silly shark films. I prefer my shark films to be more serious, but I did pick this one up. It has a lenticular sleeve on it, uh, UK edition. Shark Week, this is one of the uh, Asylum movies, um, and it's kind of like, you know, there's various different shark-related challenges that these uh, people have to kind of go through. Uh, Bait, this one again has a, um, a lenticular slipcase, and this is basically an Australian movie where there is a, um, a storm and it kind of floods this local supermarket and all the people are trapped inside with sharks. Deep Blue Sea, you all know this movie, I'm sure. 
Now, a lot of people, a lot of people like this as the second favourite shark movie outside of Jaws, and I do like it, but I think 47 metres down is better. Uh, creature, um, this is a kind of like a obviously creature feature. It's got quite a good cast in it. A um, few kind of people you'll know from TV, uh, but it also has Sid, Sid Haig in it. Jack Brooks Monster Slayer. I actually watched this yonks ago and um, on, on VHS, I think, or DVD. No, it must have been DVD. And um, I bought it again on Blu ray, though I've yet to see it again. Uh, Jerusalem. This is a. I really like this. This is a found footage film about um, a girl who kind of goes to Jerusalem and it is overrun by like, a demonic horde. Um, surprisingly large scale for a found footage movie. Beneath, this is a creature feature about a kind of a almost like an angler, giant angler fish in this lake. Um, and obviously these young kids that have to try and get out alive and stuff. It's not brilliant, but, you know, I'm a sucker for aquatic ho horror. The Mist, seminal creature feature, which is more about the human monster than the monsters outside. As I've mentioned, I'm a sucker for aquatic horror. Uh, Jurassic Predator, also known as Predator X, uh, and it's actually about a aquatic dinosaur, um, similar to the one that you would have seen in the Jurassic Park, uh, Lost Kingdom, wherever that one, you know, um, that sort of thing. It's basically like a, a giant crocodile type creature. It's not very good though. <laughs> um, Wings of Darkness, I think also known as simply Gargoyle, uh, not the most amazing movie, basically a TV movie. Uh, Feast, this was from a horror pack, but I, I do like this movie and its sequels as well, a very kind of gooey gory series. Dinosaur Project, so they found footage movie, uh, clearly about dinosaurs. Uh, Killer Beach, also known as The Sand. Uh, this one is a little bit similar to the movie Blood Beach. It's kind of like a modern um, kind of version of it. Um, I actually really like this movie. I, rate, I, I rated this one quite highly. I enjoyed it a lot. There are some kind of like obvious CGI things in it, but I still enjoyed it. Uh, Chillerama, I think, I think this is an um, a, uh, anthology movie, although I have yet to actually sit down and watch this one. Uh, the Dead Room, this is uh, from Raven Band. This is a New Zealand movie. Uh, it's so good. It's kind of like, if you like things like The Conjuring and stuff, it's uh, essentially like a paranormal investigation, but it's really scary and like real, really well done. And I think one of the best kind of ghost stories in modern, I think. Uh, also, that's really good was The Shrine. Um, I actually watched this relatively recently. It was a fairly recent watch. Um... And there's about this mysterious statue shrouded in uh, mist. 1031, um, or in the UK we'd call it 3110. This is obviously about Halloween. It's an anthology movie. Uh, this one's got a slip case, and I think it's quite hard to get hold of now. Um, it's also got a um, reversible sleeve. It's okay. There is a second one of these uh, that I've yet to see. Um, Raw, this was a another blind buy and again I bought this from the G Amazon Germany and it turns out it's a German film and obviously with no English subtitles The Hallow um, great creature feature about the kind of woodland creatures that kind of come out and uh, attack this family the Wretched, relatively modern film, only came out, I think, this year, about a kind of uh, killer witch. Dagon, 
this film reminds me so much of Resident Evil 4, if you've ever played that. Well, obviously, with the, the kind of Lovecraftian elements to it. Um, strange movie, somewhat slow moving, um, but it's all very dripping with atmosphere, if you ask me. Uh, Fear of Ghosts. This is actually called Something Else in America, although I, for the life of me, can't remember what it is. Um, something like the, the whispering or something to do with something to do with the sound. I know that. Um, it's not brilliant. Nicholas Cage. I actually quite like Nicholas Cage, and I quite like this movie, uh, Pay the Ghosts. Uh, this one, you know, it's it's one of those kind of paycheck Nicolas Cage gigs, but I still quite like it. Uh, the Clown, this one is, um, well, originally it came out, was actually a Zavi exclusive, was limited to, uh, you know, 3,000 copies or something. Um, yeah, it's decent, decent kind of slasher monster film. Uh, the Torch, it's more of a kind of a thriller, to be honest. Um, about I think it's about a couple that kind of uh, end up t torturing this guy, thinking he's done something wrong, and the question is, has he really? Uh, American Poltergeist 3. Uh, this one is um, by the same director as The Dole, and um, it's called something else in America, although that, that, that no, escapes me. It's essentially a found footage movie about things happening. Jack Frost, this is the um, Vinegar Syndrome release with the uh, the, the lenticular uh, slip. I had this and its sequel on VHS and, uh, you know, it's it's a fun, cheesy Christmas horror film. You can get the media books in it, but it's, I'm certainly not double dipping on this one. Evil Dead 2, my number two favourite film of all time. Just your box down the Blu-ray. Uh, the Church, this is the one and only shameless uh, Blu-ray that I've got. And that's limited to 3,000. Uh, Dolls, great, great kind of spooky movie. I think it's a full moon film, I want to say. Um, I watched this on, on again on VHS and, uh, yeah, brilliant, loved it. Uh, Splinter, this is a great creature feature, um, almost a little bit like the thing about this, sort of, almost like a virus that kind of makes people reanimate and go into weird monstrous shapes and things. Uh, the Curse of Sleeping Beauty, this one's actually got quite low reviews, but uh, I really like it. Um, it's one of by my, one of my favourite kind of low budget horror directors, uh, Perry Reginald Teo, who is going to be the director of the next one I'm going to show you as well. And it, to me, he's like a kind of like a B-movie version of James Wan. He has that kind of James Wan, um, old spooky house aesthetic, but it kind of has more B-movie sensibilities. Yeah, I quite like this film. And as I said, he also directed this one, Ghost Hunters, which was basically the Asylum, when the Ghostbusters remake came out, Asylum put this out. And it's essentially like... What if the Ghostbusters was not a comedy and it was more or less a straight horror film? Um, maybe it has a little bit too many elements in there. There's serial killers, ghosts, all sorts of stuff, torture rooms. Um, but I, I just I really enjoyed it. Uh, this is the Spanish version of Rage War. Which, that's what it was known in the UK. In America, I believe it was Dungeon Master. And it is... Um, Almost an anthology, but it, it focuses on the one character who goes into kind of different worlds, and each world has like its own kind of story and uh, um, you know threat. One of them is like a Mad Max one. Uh, one of them there's a big giant monster, things like this. Uh, Creep Show Two. This is an American version. This is what I got in the um, horror pack. Uh, Borderlands, you've heard me talk about this many times before if you've seen this channel. This was one of my all-time favourite films, and this is probably my, one of my top ten films. A super effective, really creepy found footage movie. This is the German Blu-ray, which comes with a slipcase. Um, 
I try and turn people onto this film as often as I can. It is so creepy. Uh, the Enfield Haunting. Fan of The Conjuring? Did you like The Conjuring 2? This is a different take on that same story. So, Conjuring 2 based off a real case. This is also based off the same case. Uh, this was a UK miniseries, which has been obviously re-edited to just be one thing. Um, and it's a little bit different from The Conjuring, as you can imagine, but I think is, uh, you know, it's still pretty good in its own right. Uh, Mama, directed by Andy Muschietti, who went on to do the It movies. And this one has a uh, lenticular slip. One series that will probably have uh, slipped most people by, uh, Haunted. Um, that stars uh, Matthew Fox, who you probably will know from Lost. Uh, and he lasted, I think, less than one season. And... Um, I really enjoyed it when it was on, and it's one of these, I'm always a bit like dubious about getting into TV shows, because so many seem to get cancelled, but I really enjoyed this one when it was, I was disappointed this was cancelled. Speaking of cancelled, uh, Ash vs. the Evil Dead in a lenticular slip, I do have the um, the metal pack for this, or the, this is uh, an American one. Uh, Husk. I do like a Scarecrow movie. This one is pretty good. UK Blu-ray with slip. Uh, Autopsy of Jane Doe. Again, fantastic horror movie. Uh, pretty ski, uh, pretty sp spooky. And there's a great scene involving a bell. That's all I'm saying. Uh, this was also in the horror packs that I got. Um, two films on here. Neither of which I've seen. <laughs> Vile, uh, again, a, a, a um, blind buy that I've yet to watch. It was only a couple of quid. Uh, the Spanish version of the Monster Squad. Obviously, I have the um, media book for this now. And then my final uh, Blu-ray is Dead Awake, which was uh, a really decent kind of sleep paralysis movie that I reviewed a little while ago. And uh, what did you pick up? So that is it. That is my MRA collection of horrors. Any particular versions of movies that you kind of liked? Um, anything I've turned you on to, please let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't already, please check out part one, which is the uh, action, science fiction and fantasy stuff. Cheers for that. watching. Bye for now.